Good evening. Welcome to South Asian Newsline. I'm Arjun Chaudhary. We are on the top stories are tracking for you on Thursday, the 22nd of January. India Supreme Court holds officials of Chennai and Rajasthan teams guilty of IPL spot fixing. Pakistan freezes assets of JUD, imposes travel restrictions on Hafiz Saeed. And Indian high alert amid reports of terror attacks during Obama visit. And now for all the details. Multi-layered security arrangements have been put in place in capital New Delhi ahead of US President Barack Obama's visit to India. President Obama will be the chief guest at India's Republic Day celebrations next week. An unprecedented seven-layer security cordon will envelop the event area where the U.S. President Barack Obama and senior Indian leaders will witness India's Republic Day Parade on January 26. The ground area will be guarded by nearly 40,000 security personnel from the Delhi Police Force and other security agencies. To add to that, a specially created airspace above the area will be monitored by radar. A surveillance control room has also been set up in vulnerable areas of the capital, which has been put on the highest alert. As part of extra precautions, security has also been beefed up on the border areas with Pakistan to curb any infiltration attempts by militants. The internal arrangement is, number one, it is highly confidential, obviously because of the security itself. So these two issues, I am very clear as far as defence is concerned, the borders are well protected, well guarded. In addition, shops and metro stations in the radius of one kilometre of the Republic Day Parade venue will also be shut down on the morning of January 26th. Also in the run-up to his visit, traffic has been diverted from all routes Mr Obama is scheduled to be taking from the airport to the places he's set to go to. Heightened security arrangements are also underway in Agra, in the northern province of Uttar Pradesh, ahead of Mr. Obama's visit to the iconic Taj Mahal on January 27th. The Monument of Love will remain shut for the normal public for the day. India's Western Mumbai has been put on high alert after intelligence inputs about a possible terror strike with Pakistan-based outfits. According to reports, jihadi groups Jamaat ud dawa Lashkar-e-Taiba, Jaish-e Mohammed and Hizbul Mujahideen have dispatched four action groups to India for carrying out attacks before Tuesday next week. For Mumbai, the specific target is Siddhi Vinayak Temple. All this comes days before US President Barack Obama visits India next week. Washington has warned Pakistan of consequences if any sort of terror incident takes place during President Obama's India visit. Pakistan on Thursday said it has frozen the bank accounts of Jamaat ud dawa Its founder and one of India's most wanted terrorists, Hafiz Saeed, has also been barred from leaving the country. In what is seen as a major shift in its policy towards terrorism, Islamabad is apparently acting tough on the JUD, a globally designated terror outfit which is believed to have close ties with the Pakistani establishment. Pakistan Foreign Ministry on Thursday confirmed the move to freeze the assets of the JUD, which operates in the country as a humanitarian organization. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Tasneem Aslam said Pakistan has also banned the Haqqani network and armed militia responsible for many high-profile attacks on US and NATO forces in Afghanistan. Pakistan Aslam said the move was taken under its obligation to the United Nations and not from the pressure by U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry, who visited Islamabad last week. The Indian Supreme Court on Thursday barred Chennai Super Kings and Rajasthan Royals from the Indian Premier League. The top court also found team principal of Chennai, Gurunath Mayapan, and co-owner Rajasthan, Raj Kundra, guilty of illegal betting. In a historic judgment, the Supreme Court said top officials of the two teams have been found guilty of betting. The court also struck down a provision in the IPL rules allowing BCCI officials to own teams. The Apex Court directed the Board for Cricket Control in India to hold fresh elections to choose its office wearers within six weeks. And Srinivasan, the BCCI president in exile, has been barred from contesting elections. The court has asked him to choose between the Cricket Board or Chennai Super Kings, the IPL team he owns. It, however, cleared his name in covering up betting charges by his son-in-law and Chennai team principal Mayappan. A three-member committee has also been constituted to decide on the quantum of punishment for the teams and the officials. 
IPL was rocked by the scandal in 2013 after former Indian bowler Sri Sant and two other players of Rajasthan Royals were arrested for spot fixing. Subsequent investigations revealed that team officials of Rajasthan and Chennai were also involved in illegal betting. New Delhi should initiate to resume peace talks with Islamabad. Pakistan Prime Minister's advisor on foreign affairs, Sartaj Aziz, has said. He also claimed that the tensions on the border have created a new level of uncertainty in the bilateral relations. Sartaj Aziz on Wednesday said Pakistan is committed to a meaningful and result-oriented dialogue to resolve issues with India. Referring to New Delhi's cancellation of the peace talks, Aziz said India should initiate the process to resume the dialogue. Blaming India for the recent tensions along the LOC and the international border, Aziz stated that Pakistan will continue its support to Kashmiri cause despite New Delhi's opposition. India had in August last year called off the proposed foreign secretary-level talks, which was seen as the first bilateral engagement towards peace under the Modi government after Pakistani High Commissioner Abdul Basit met Kashmir separatist leaders. Pakistan defended the move, calling it a long-standing practice and has ever since reiterated that any talks with India will be held only after consulting the separatists. Over 828 Afghan families have been deported from Pakistan-occupied Kashmir as part of a grand operation to evict illegal immigrants from the region. The move has seen hundreds of unlawful settlers voluntarily moving out from district Mirpur alone till Wednesday. The operation is a part of the government's nation action plan against terrorism. POK Prime Minister Chaudhry Abdul Majid had on Tuesday approved of sending the Afghan refugees residing in the Himalayan region back to their country. He said the plan was a joint strategy of civilian and military leadership to rid the country of insurgency. With no end to the opposition-led indefinite blockade in Bangladesh, public anger is growing by the day. The ruling Awami League has called for the arrest of Bangladesh Nationalist Party Supremo Begum Khalid Zia for disrupting the country. The nationwide shutdown enforced by the BNP completed its 17th day on Thursday amid isolated incidents of violence. The party is also observing a 48-hour anti-government general strike in capital Dhaka. Bangladesh's ruling Awami League on Thursday held demonstrations against BNP's continued blockade. They called for an immediate end to the shutdown which is affecting the economy of the country. Nearly 30 people have been killed in the opposition-led violence since early this month. Bangladesh Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina had on Wednesday suggested that it would be logical to arrest Zia who instigated the violence. Her Awami League said Zia should be held responsible for the deaths of innocent civilians during the forced shutdown. BNP Jamater Shitshoneta Begum Khaleda Zia Dai Purishkar Boltechai Amader Potteket Putti Aban Takbe Amra Ashun Parai Mohallai Eded Putti Eded Birute Protiro Goretuli. The 20 party alliance led by Zia's BNP has enforced the blockade to pressurize the government to declare fresh elections under a non partisan caretaker administration. India and Myanmar have agreed to work together against insurgency and boost connectivity in the northeastern region. Myanmar Vice President Sai Mok Khan met Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi to strengthen relations between the two neighbors. A report. India and Myanmar on Wednesday discussed ways to build bilateral ties in view of the Modi government's Act East policy, particularly in connectivity, education, infrastructure, trade and culture. Myanmar First Vice President Sai Mok Kham, who was on a five-day visit to India, met Prime Minister Narendra Modi in capital New Delhi. Modi recalled his first visit to Myanmar in November to attend the ASEAN India Summit and East Asia Summit and his first meeting with President Yu Thein Sen. Kham, who was accompanied by a high-level delegation, held meetings with Indian President Pranam Mukherjee and other dignitaries. Yangon and New Delhi have also agreed to work together to thwart insurgents operating in the northeast region of India and boost cultural ties and people-to-people -people contact. Pakistan-occupied Kashmir is endowed with abundant natural resources. But this has not benefited Kashmiris in any way, as the resources are exploited to power Pakistan's energy star provinces, leaving the region in darkness. Pakistan-occupied Kashmir, or POK, is on the boil yet again. The prolonged power cuts and inflated utility bills have brought the people onto the roads. 
Hundreds of traders in capital Muzaffarabad downed their shutters and hit the streets to protest against Pakistan and its Water and Power Development Authority or WAPDA. To combat its burgeoning power crisis, Pakistan is building a series of hydro projects in the illegally occupied land. But Kashmiris in POK are not benefiting as a good part of the electricity generated here goes to Pakistan's main cities. Muzaffarabad's life is completely mafluj. And neither the school kids nor the hospital can be operated on. Neither the daily work can be done for themselves. We are sitting against the system. We are against the system. Khan also blamed Pakistan for diverting their share of electricity to appease the Chinese companies in POK. Here, the Chinese companies are working on the Nilan Jalan project. पे उनको 23 मेगावाट बिजली युक्त है आजाद कश्मीर दे रही है क्यों दे रही है वो तो वापस ने मैनेज करना है ना हमारी बिजली उनको दे रहे हैं While Pakistan continues to exploit the local resources while taxing Kashmiris heavily, it does not allocate any funds for bettering the social infrastructure of the backward region. It was a treat for connoisseurs of dance and music as the temple town of Bhubaneswar came alive with the classical beats of ghungrus and traditional drums. Take a look. The backdrop of the famous Mukteswar temple gave it a perfect setting as Odyssey dancers from across India thronged provincial capital Bhubaneswar to celebrate the unrivaled charm of the eastern state. The three-day Mukteswar dance festival inculcated a mix of traditional music and dance performances. Tapping to the rhythms of accompanying musical instruments, artists gave the audience a transcendental experience. It's every dancer's desire to perform in Mukteswar. And I'm fortunate enough to have got this opportunity uh, to dance before the Lord, to dance for the Lord here. Yeah, and it's such a great stage. Uh, the ambience is spectacular and I love dancing here. The performances included choreographic renderings of stories of Indian gods. Scores of people from across the world flocked to witness the glittering event. The annual festival aims at exhibiting and preserving the traditional arts and cultures of the state of Odisha. After fighting goons and villains, Bollywood's favourite action hero is out to counter terrorism this time. Take a look at how he plans to do it at the box office this weekend. Bollywood's quintessential macho man Akshay Kumar is set to redefine the action thriller genre with Baby. The actor promoted his upcoming film in capital New Delhi alongside ace director Neeraj Pandey. Kumar, whose 2014 film Holiday caught him rave reviews for playing an army officer, is broaching the subject of terrorism this time. He urged his fans to watch the film and spread awareness. <laughs> Baby revolves around a group of men who form a covert counter-intelligence unit to tackle insurgents. In the course of foiling a militant attack, top officer Ajay discovers a major threat to the nation, a plot masterminded by a global terrorist Maulana Rahman. As the team goes through constant leads and challenges, they race against time to pin down the threat. The film also stars Anupam Kher, Rana Dagupati, KK Menon and Sushant Singh. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude the top stories, once again. India's Supreme Court holds officials of Chennai and Rajasthan teams guilty of IPL spot fixing. Pakistan freezes assets of JOD, imposes travel restrictions on Hafiz Saeed. And Indian high alert amid reports of terror attacks during Obama visit. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SouthAsianNewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia Newsline. And that's all in tonight's edition. Which is the same time tomorrow. Good night.